So this is second part for the activity on the car. I think we're on part three, race car. So we designed a UML diagram in the previous video. So very um, partially designed it. Now what we're going to do in this video is actually create the code. So uh, even though I don't have a complete design, I'm going to give you a partial solution for the code as well. So I'm switching into my uh, Eclipse. Now I'm using a Macintosh this time, so it might look a little different, but let's uh, see how this works. So I'm going to go to File, New, Java Project, and I'm gonna call this thing Race Car. And Race Car is down here. So let's see what's in the source, nothing. So let's create a new class, and I'm gonna call this thing Car. And let's click Finish. This is just gonna be the Car class. Now we're going to test this thing out. I'm going to have a new class and I'm going to call this thing main program. And this one will have a main entry point. Okay, so the main entry point is where the code will begin execution. Now the car though is where we're going to start the design. So the properties of the car. Every property should be labeled as private. And I'm going to invent a few things like for instance a string and the color of the car and these will probably come from your UML design. So I am going to be taking a look back at this diagram. If I had completed this properly, I would have things like color and I would have things like the make on it. Let's get to the engine and the tires. That's the hard part. So if I were to have another class called tire, I could add this to my car class. So let's do a right click on the source folder and let's make a new object called tire. Now we know that the tire has at least one property. It has a private property called uh, pressure. So let's call this thing pressure. You might want to get creative and give your tires a color. Uh, you can also probably have a integer of your, maybe your diameter. Get creative. Uh, what does the tire have? Uh, it's a tread type. So let's say that is a tread type. Now some of these we might not even use, but they're fun to play with. But the uh, pressure though is the one that is going to Im be important for the uh, rest of the uh, program. Okay, I wanna create all these things as getters and setters. So let's do a right click and go down to source. And where is my generate getters and setters? There it is. I'm going to select all of these items and click okay. How nice, they've all been created. Now for the uh, constructor, I need to have one of those as well. So fortunately, I can go to source and create a generate constructor using fields. And once again, I create a default constructor. There we go. So I've got a tire. Now let's go back into our car object. And I'm going to say private. And this time I'm going to have a tire. And we can call this thing tire. So this data type was automatically included somehow. That's because it's in the same package, the default package. It means that car and program and tire can all see each other and they can see each other's uh, uh, by importing. Now, instead of having just a single tire, I want to have more than one tire. So I'm going to change this from a single tire. I'm gonna say tire and then use the square brackets. And that stands for an array of tires. All right, so I got my car, I got tires. We'll probably have to have engines and other things, but right now let's focus on the tires to get you started on this. Well, let's create gener generate the uh, getters and setters. So I'm going to choose that first. Select all of these and okay. Then I want to automatically generate a constructor. So it's not complete, but this will get us started. Let's go into main program now. And I'm going to create, first of all, some tires. So let's say tire, and we're gonna call them T1 equals a new tire. Now, I can't do that. It says here, we are looking for integer and integer. Why do we need integer and integer? Let's go look at tire here. So the tire constructor needs to have four different things. We need a pressure, color, diameter, and tread type. So in my constructor, the pressure, let's start off with zero. Let's see what the other ones are. We have string of color and integer diameters. So the color, this is a black tire. 
and the diameter is going to be 18 inches and the tread type is going to be called zigzag so that's my first tire now my car should have more than one tire so let's copy and paste a few times and let's call this thing T2, T3, T4 and uh, these are all going to be similar. I'm going to have one red tire I'm going to make my car look cool. A white tire and a pink tire. And they all have the same diameter and the same tread type. Now in my uh, constructor for the car if I want to have a car and it's going to call him my supercar he's going to be a new car now it's going to ask me for a constructor to say uh, we need to add in the the default values well let's see what were my default values I needed to put in a string for color let's just copy these and take it back into here so I am expecting to have a color well my color of my car is gonna be um, black I'm gonna have a black car the make of my car is going to be a it's gonna be a Ford and now I have to have an array, an array of tires. So to be able to put an array of tires into the constructor, I need to define the array. So let's say I'm going to have an array tire equals, let's say I give it a name equals, and then I'm just going to define this by putting in the three tires in curly brackets. And so now I have defined tires as four items. So over here, I can use the word tires. Now there's other things that we're going to have to add to our car as well. So you're probably going to have to have an engine type and we can call him E and it's going to complain that says we don't have engines yet and it offers to uh, create one for you. So you can create a class called engine and define it. Maybe give it its uh, displacement, its uh, style, whether it's a V8, a V6, or whatever. But all the properties have to be made and then you can create an instance of engine inside your car. Obviously I haven't done that yet so I'm gonna leave that out. Now our car has to have a, a start method so let's say public and we'll go void start. A couple of things I have to check. First of all are the tires going to be inflatable? So I'm going to have a for loop. Let's say for int i equals zero I is less than the uh, number of tires, so tires dot length. That'll tell me how many tires are installed, and then we'll do I plus plus. So now I want to check to see if the tires are inflated. I'm going to uh, put in a actually return value here called boolean, and uh, we're going to tell it if this was successful or not. And so I'll define it as false. It did not start until we've actually checked. The, re the values of the tires. So now if all of the tires have a 32 pounds pressure or more then we can assume that the success is true. So how does this work? We're gonna say we're gonna say if tires I dot get pressure. Good we got get pressure. If that's greater than 32 Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to do the opposite. If it's less than 32, then we're going to say success equals false. Okay, does that make sense? No, it doesn't. This should start as a assumed true. So we'll assume that the car start is success, and then we'll check all the tires. If any one of the tires is less than 32, then that will cause success to fail, and we'll return it. So let's go back into our main program. So now if I'm going to do something like supercar, dot start I'm going to uh, get a message back and let's see we'll define this as boolean started and we'll say that is initially set to false and then I can say started equals the return value from the start command and then I can check to see if started equals true then I can print a message and say system out this is running. Okay and then I can also tell it to print out a failure message if the car did not run. So this only implements the tire part there's still going to be a section for engine but this should work let's see what happens I'm gonna say click here and run it and it said the car failed to start why would it have failed to start? 
Well, if you look at my tires, I created them all with zero pounds of pressure. So I need to do an inflate. Let's see if I could do that. Uh, I would have to have a, let's say, T1.inflate. And let's say I want to inflate it to 50 pounds. Now, why doesn't inflate work? It says you don't have that method yet. Would you like to create it? Well, isn't that convenient? So I'll create it. And let's see what it looks like inside of tire now. So tire, inflate, there it is. Public void, inflate. Now if I want to say that this dot pressure equals the new value that was passed in as a parameter is I. And so now we have ourselves a method for inflating the tire. So if I come back into here, I have inflate to 50. Well, let's see, will that work? I run that and it says still the car failed to start. Let's give ourselves some more information back in the car and uh, we can probably print out a message. So now this message should tell me that when a tire is too low it will not start. So let's uh, click run and it says tire 1, 2, and 3 are too low to start. So this one must have been tire zero in the array. Let's go back and see what we put in here. So T1, sure enough, that would be the first tire. Let's let's make this more obvious. I'm going to put in a tire three and inflate him to 50 pounds. And now I have zero is too low, one is too low, and three is too low. So the third tire is tire number two, according to the loop number. So that gives us a little bit more feedback. We'd have to inflate everybody, turn the engine on, and install it. There's going to be a lot more methods that you have to create. But when you're done, you should have yourself a nice uh, car object that you could use in a game. So let's see what you're missing. You need to have the code logic to do start, run, stop, and restart the car. So does run mean that you uh, go up to like 60 miles an hour? We want to code everything and uh, we must have a driver script. So the driver script, when it talks about the driver script, that's this uh, program called main program. Main program is the driver, car is the thing that's being driven. What else does it say in here? Uh, we need a screenshot that says we've got all the features running and then I want to give a uh, final for delivery. So a UML class diagram a UML class diagram is something that's going to be built and extended from here. Uh, what else do we need? Uh, screenshots demonstrating that you can do all of your objects. So put both of these into a Word document and then uh, you can submit that as your assignment. I'm going to add one more requirement that should be there. Is submit a zip file of your source code with a Javadoc directory.